Palm color women are less demanding compared to black women, and that is the reason why black men are dating outside the race. Not my words, this is what this brother said in this video. When asked who would he rather date or what are his dating preferences and he said he would rather date a palm color woman and not a black woman. Yeah, he said that. Because black women are just too demanding, you gotta buy them red bottoms and stuff like that. Is it the truth? Is it a stereotype? Or should we go back to preaching the good old gospel of why it is important to date in your community or in your race? And now that we are having this discussion about this brother, should we finally excuse those NBA stars or black stars that date in the palm color community? Because we are always saying that they are the ones that date most of the times. Palm color people who are not even celebrities, right? Black celebrities dating palm color women. Like why is it so common nowadays? And now simple folk from the black community are dating outside the black community? Like is there something going on that we should be aware of? Leave your thoughts in the comments. And remember, this is for educational purposes only. With that being said, let us begin. What race would you not date? Right now, I feel like black people. <laughs> we get more love everywhere else than from our own people. I can't even date a black girl without with my nails, my hair, my feet. I need some red bottoms. I want some look. So white girls just for the vibe, Spanish, Arabian. I date every woman, and they all just want to have fun and just enjoy our company. Right. Black woman, yo, can you pay my bills? Can you pay my car note? Why you think that is though? I mean, we you know as a people we already down low, so yeah. it's like we coming from a poverty level. But still, we shouldn't come at each other like we getting over on each other. Right. We should be working together to get over on everybody. Black women, can y'all get up out of the seats down front? I'm going to need for y'all to get up out of the seats down front and move to the back. I'm calling to the front white women, Spanish women, and Arabian women. Hell, all women of color. Please come down to the front. Find you a seat down front. Let's talk. Okay, y'all down for Oh, I, there y'all are. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? Listen, what is y'all doing? What is y'all doing? He should not be running around here talking about black women since he prefers you all. We need for y'all to step up to the plate, right? Since he prefers y'all, we need for y'all to go out with him. Black women, we, we just don't have time for the clowning, right? For whatever reason, they view y'all as better than black women, right? So, be better. Be better. I know y'all may think that type of man is beneath y'all. I know some of y'all think, hell, if he's denigrating and disrespecting his own women... What makes me think that he's going to be a good man to me? Don't think like that. Don't think like that. Give him a chance. Please. Because black women, we have been dealing with too much from this society and from black men. Right? And so we've decided that we're going to focus on our healing. We've decided that we're going to focus on our education. They told us to choose better, so we're choosing better. We're choosing us, right? We're focused on, you know, getting that career. We're focused on spending time with those who want to spend time with us. We're focused on taking that vacation, right? And all they're focused on is talking about us. We need for y'all to step up to the plate and do your due diligence. Keep these types of men away from us. The, what y'all doing? Y'all said y'all was allies. Be an ally to black women and, and keep these men happy and away from us. Okay? Take one for the team. I'm telling you, everybody plays a role. And this is y'all's role. I, I, I know. I know. A lot of y'all are like, but Tabitha, he's a clown. Yeah, we know that. We know that. But y'all have got to take one for the team. Truth doesn't mind being questioned. But a lie can't stand to be challenged. <laughs> this is what happens when you talk to white people about race. And I laugh because it, it's sad. But it's also funny because... It's incredible. And I recently experienced it myself. I had witnessed a transformation 
of an adult into a bat crazy Karen. It happened right in front of my eyes when we got on the topic of race. So I'm on vacation. I'm staying at a family member's house. We're all watching the Olympics. I'm sick, by the way, but I'm on the couch trying to relax. These Trump supporting family members uh, are teary eyed as they're singing the national anthem during the Olympics. <laughs> you know, patriotic nationalist. And I'm getting a little uncomfortable, but it's okay. And then at the end, when they said liberty and justice for all, I said for white people, not for all white people. And that's all I said. And of course, that triggered the female, and she started lecturing me and going on and on and on, deflecting, denying, distorting, talking over me, just being a bully, being hateful. And then she said something that they usually say, some kind of crazy justify white supremacy, because that's what white people do, right? She said, we're talking about racial equality and racial justice for black folks. She said, well, I don't, I don't think they, that they should get racial justice because they can never get enough. They'll always want too much. They'll always want more and more and more. I said, oh, really? That's interesting. So before we had this racial conversation, I had already called my friend who's black, and I asked him permission if I could call him if I needed him to let her know or let this family people know that a black person knows about their races. You mind if I call you if I need to? He said, I'm all in. Call me. I don't care. Yeah, let's do it. So and she said that racist, I called my black friend. And I put him on speakerphone, and I said, so she just said that black people could never ever ever get enough racial equality therefore they don't deserve it because they always want too much that woman who i've known for many years transformed into a karen she was triggered it was i swear to god like a werewolf coming out a grown woman literally had a complete insane breakdown she started screaming uncontrollably cussing me the supposed christian woman in front of her children and everybody in my family is saying the f word get the f out of my house screaming and jumping in that complete temper tantrum so <laughs> uh, so anyhow she grabs my in this fit of rage as she cries victim He's calling me a race. I'm not going to be humiliated in front of black people. I'm not a race. She grabs all my shit and just throws it in the yard. Scaring everybody in the house. I even thought she was going to assault me at one point. She didn't think God because I'd have her arrested. But she did manage to kick me out of the house. Throw all my in the grass. So, you know, I got a hotel. I lost another family member. But you know what? I'll just add it to the list of family members, friends, and coworkers that I've lost. And would I do it again? Hell, yes. Because at least she knows it made her question her morality racially and it made her question the lies that she's living and it forced her to think about something that she didn't want to think about and the reason she got triggered because for the first time in her life she could not hide her racism from black people that's why she got triggered she had to face her own goddamn immorality and the own lies that she's living it may not change her I don't know if it will or not but it'll let her know that racism is unacceptable. And that's what we have to do, folks. Hold white people accountable for their race. Now, you might want to time it right so you don't get kicked out of somebody's house or get assaulted. But hey, sometimes you got to do what you got to do, right? But anyhow, hold each other accountable, folks. That's what we have to do. So it's good that some palm color folks are aware that palm color women do pretend that they are not art to the cis when in fact they are. And we've heard of phenomenons or situations where a palm color woman was married to a black man and after 10 years of marriage, tension erupted and they divorced. And this usually happens after 10 years in marriage. Like most of interracial couples, that's how they divorce. But let's look at some historical things that could have contributed to these phenomenon of black people dating within palm color communities. So historical legacies, including colonization and slavery, have shaped racial dynamics. These legacies impact how people perceive and choose romantic partners. So perhaps palm color women view black men as survivors and people that are worthy to protect them. I don't really know. But let us continue. So during slavery, black women were often denied agency and considered less desirable. This perception persisted even after slavery ended. 
Okay, so there's that notion. And the other thing is changes during the civil rights era led some black men to distance themselves from black women and align with palm color men to improve their social status. So there's that as well. And I think I've heard some speculations to do with NBA stars and why they date palm color people. So they might do it for social status, but at times they might also do it to appease the audience because they are playing for the larger audience or the larger crowd and not just one community. So perhaps dating a palm color woman might make the the community feel represented because we do know that the NBA or all these sports most of the sports are black dominated so could there be a notion that suggests if you're gonna be a star in this team you need to date palm colored I don't really know but the speculations online are a lot which brings me to online trends and the role dating sites have played in interracial relationships. Online dating platforms have amplified racial preferences. Studies show that ethnic minorities are often passed over as romantic options. For instance, research indicates that black men and women are more likely to message palm color people on dating apps than the reverse. So this observational study shows that when a black person goes on an online dating site, they are more likely to message somebody who's palm colored and not somebody who looks like our skin. Now, you tell me, could this be because we are scared of one another? Or what is it really? Or perhaps it's not even true. Or could it be that these media representations and stereotypes are actually working in brainwashing us? Like when you look at somebody online and you're like, maybe this is a mean girl or a mean guy. So let me just look at the other races and look at how they're looking. And perhaps you might say, oh, this one looks easy on the face. So let me go ahead and try to message them. I'm not really sure, but are you seeing how these media representations and stereotypes have really shaped our perceptions and understanding of our society? Like media representation is the actual thing that is actually influencing most of these things. Because this article later says that online dating trends are further re-emphasized or rather influenced by societal expectations in beauty standards as well as media representation. So with that aspect in mind, that means that it was done so purposefully. Media representation could have also further exacerbated this in happening because it's a purposeful action. As Dr. Omar would say, some people are on a mission and they want the black race to mix with other races so that black people are no longer the original man. I don't know what Dr. Omar would say, but in Dr. Omar's words, I think you get what I'm saying. Because if you have been observing the media lately, then you would say that a lot of industry giants from the black community are actually just dating palm colored or somebody who's more lighter skinned than you would expect, more, more lighter skinned than them. And this is the reason why influencers now perhaps are influencing us or influencing the black community to be dating outside the black race, right? So that is the reason why we're seeing media representation because what you see online is media. What you see on social media is actually media representation. So you might get what you see on media and try to do it yourself or implement it because you're getting exposed to those waves and frequencies and those frequencies are actually changing you or interacting with you at a subconscious level. So there's that as well. So preferences are multifaceted and influenced by cultural norms, media portrayals and personal experiences. Some individuals may seek partners based on shared interests, values or physical attraction regardless of race. It is essential to recognize that individual preferences vary widely and not all black men prefer palm color women. But the biggest thing that I heard this brother talk about is the high maintenance skill stereotype where men deem black women as more demanding compared to other races or not just even black women like where men would just categorize this woman as a high maintenance girl or more demanding than other girls so the biggest distinction between high maintenance and low maintenance women is that low maintenance women are more willing to put themselves second this is attractive to some men men that spend more time outside the home and would come back to the home and find it or intact happy and peaceful something like that so a low maintenance woman is perfect for someone who doesn't care about what she wants his wants and needs come first there's never any 50 50 his life is more important than hers he is the short color and she better not counter that otherwise there will be a problem low maintenance women tolerate that treatment better than high maintenance women and there you have it that summarizes our discussion involving today's video but you leave your thoughts in the comment section and tell us what you think. And remember, this was just our perspective and your perspective also matters in these discussions. Signing off for now, I'll see you in the next video. Please like, share and subscribe.